the Lord. I want to bring you a truth talk today and ask the question, what does the Bible say about our thoughts? What does the Bible say about our thoughts? Our mind, you know, is an amazing thing. It files away your experience. It files away your emotion, information, a whole gamut of stuff and puts it to memory. It pulls from memory what we know and what we've been taught in order to identify right from wrong. It's all happening in our minds. And our thoughts, you know, oftentimes just come out of nowhere. It's like a fleeting thing here and there. As fast as they come, they're gone. You know, thoughts are an amazing thing. Nobody really knows or can see our thoughts, yet they're very, very real. So what does the Bible say about what's going on up here? Our thoughts. Number one, God knows our thoughts, right? Man cannot know what you think. You do not know what I'm thinking right now. And I do not know what you're thinking right now. But God knows our thoughts. Psalm 9411. For those of you on live stream, my wife says she knows what I'm thinking. You don't know what I'm thinking. Though. Correct. I do not know what she's thinking. Psalm 9411. The Lord knows people's thoughts. Psalm 139 and verse 2. You know my thoughts even when I'm far away. This truth, this reality should instill fear into your heart this morning. God knows what you're thinking. He knows your thoughts. God is literally present in your thought life. Truth number two, you can sin with your thoughts. The Bible makes it very clear. You know, many people, including religious people, think that as long as they don't physically commit the sin, that they're clean. Matthew 5, 27, we know the verse, but let's talk about it. I tell you, anyone who even looks at a woman with lust has already committed adultery with her in his heart. Jesus is making a point. If your thoughts are desiring that which is sinful, you have already sinned, even if you don't act out physically. He talks about it in Matthew chapter 5. To affirm the seriousness of this, Jesus continues and says, hey, if your eye is causing you to think a thought of sin, you better gouge it out. Let's read it. If your eye, even your good eye, causes you to lust, gouge it out and throw it away. It's better for you to lose one part of your body than for your whole body to be thrown into hell. Jesus did not mean literally to make yourself blind or one eye. But his point was to get away from whatever it is that's stimulating thoughts, sinful thoughts, because sinful thoughts can send you to hell. Truth number three, thoughts precede action. Everything you do is premeditated. This is why we are without excuse. God holds us accountable. We think it and then we do it. As a man thinks, so is he. James chapter one he speaks about the progression of sin and says temptation or thoughts come from our own evil desires which entice us and drag us away. These desires give birth to sinful actions and when sin is allowed to grow, it gives birth to death. Thoughts come before sinful behavior. This means that our thoughts are important today. God's asking you to think about your thought life. Truth number four, your thoughts need renewed. The Bible calls this the renewing of the mind or having the mind of Christ. And I had this prepared before yesterday's band of brother meeting. Men, we talked about this yesterday. It's amazing how the scripture calls us to renew our mind. And science is just now proving the scripture that with the renewing and the washing of the word, new neuro pathways can be created and the mind and the thought life can be transformed. So Romans chapter 12 and verse 2. Let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. That's the New Living Translation. Paul told the Corinthians that we have the mind of Christ. 1 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 16. Our thoughts need renewed. They're not neutral. And it's not okay to think evil, think bad, think wicked, just not do it. It's not about what you do. It's also about what you think. So our thoughts is where the battle rages between truth and lie. Our thoughts is where Satan attacks you. He starts by putting a thought into your mind that is believable and desirable. Children, the thought comes into your mind. Mom will never know. <laughs> child and adult, or just child and big child. You really need to buy that. 
They don't like you because, you know how many people take up offense because of a thought that they judge somebody else that they don't like me. They don't like me. A thought. Or how about this one? You should just quit. Thoughts. Thoughts. Second Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 4, we take, every, we take captive every thought to make it obedient to Christ. Do you see a theme? See how much God is speaking about thoughts and what we think? If our thoughts are not exposed by truth and then taken it captive, we're at a dangerous place. You'll begin to believe the thought and you'll begin to start and act out the thoughts. God sees. He knows the fantasies, the lies, the sinful thoughts you cherish. Nobody's above sinful thoughts. But we need to identify them. We need to remove them, take them captive. Or if we allow those things, we will fall into death. So let me ask you this question. Can you tell your best friend or your spouse everything that you think about? If not, then you need to take action. There's more to be had on this best selling, there's more to be had on this subject than the best selling book of all times. Written over 1,600 years by 40 authors in three languages and three continents, the Bible is the truth on the subject of thoughts. Amen.